écoute, il va faire entre moins 1 et moins 2 cette nuit. Ça devrait venir vers 4 heures. Donc, euh, on commence à chauffer à 4h30 pour qu'on ait le temps de chauffer au moment où il fera le plus froid. Et s'il n'y avait pas eu la lutte anti-gel avec 9 nuits de gel sur ces abricotiers, il n'y aurait plus rien du tout. This is the duck right here that I think is actually blind. When I'm carving a spoon, as soon as I take the axe or sharpen my knife, engaging in this process, I get quiet. Suddenly I smell things, I smell the wood, I hear the splitting of the wood. I see the colors, I see the direction of the grain. It gives me so much knowledge. Nature is really abundant. God gave us what we need all over the place. And you know, even if you don't have woods, there are a lot of different ways you can make compost. We try to keep the vlog anything under 12 minutes. Immediately starts off with a shirtless man, catchy beat, captivating. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life now. Yeah, looks decent. The day started just terribly with those explosions and as a result, I arrived only by the evening. I'm starting doing the most important things which can be done today. Happy Sunday Seed Day and welcome back to the Abundance Plus Film Festival. If you haven't already, there are two other days before this one and they are going to be available until Monday midnight. This will be available as a replay, but do stay with us. This is live. Let's just feel the energy of each other. Let's get in the online chat and chat with each other. Maybe you're viewing from a host party across the world. Thank you, thank you hosts for hosting this and thank you everyone else for seeking out a host and being bold enough to meet strangers. Hopefully you came for the films and you're gonna go away with friends. If you guys like these films and you want them past Monday, they are gonna be up in Abundance Plus for the next two years and you can watch them at your leisure, share them with your friends and family. So you definitely wanna check out Abundance Plus and that's not all. We have the Film Fest videos, but we have videos and TV shows and documentaries to inspire. We have hundreds of instructional videos, DIY kind of stuff to get you homesteading, get you doing the things you're seeing these people doing in these films. And lastly, we have a rich and vibrant community that is just thriving and exploding and helping each other. It's amazing. So definitely check out Abundance Plus. I'll leave the link in the description. Without further ado, let's jump right in. This time, we're going to Asia. This is a movie called The Memory of Kabisa. I'll be honest with you guys, in screening these films, I would just screen them. I would just, you know, j jot through them and selecting them. I wanted to watch them with you, so I'll be watching this for the first time. Dan has watched every single one of them to approve, and we have selected these films. This one, we liked it for its international appeal, and, I in my glimpses of it, it doesn't disappoint. It takes us out of our normal mindset and puts us in a different mindset and explores our relationship as the growers with the things that we are growing. Absolutely beautiful film. Enjoy.
our roots are in the soil. We are living bacteria which are taking a human shape for some time. We are like plants, you know, we come from the soil and we come back to the soil. This is maybe the only universal root we have, which has nothing to do with history, but it has to do with nature. My name is Patrick Meis. I'm a retired diplomat. Ah, Wendy. T'es quand même une sale brute, hein, toi. I ended my career as an ambassador of Belgium in China and Mongolia from 2009 to 2013. So this is Kabisa. My wife Minion is from Donsha. So we came here in late 2012 looking for a place to settle down after my retirement. I felt immediately that this place was the place where I wanted to go back to nature. This is part of my call. I was born in Africa, in the tropical forest, where nature is really thriving in a way we can barely imagine. So I want Kabisa to become a prototype of what permaculture can achieve. Permaculture is part of the regenerative agriculture, which is regenerating the ecosystem. This is what the CBD, the Convention of Biodiversity, is doing. It's a big challenge. Hello, Bees are very, very important in what we do. Bees and man, we are stuck together. Between the two species, there is a very, very important connection, and the bees are disappearing. Minyan once came with this young man and he came into the land and he brought us some of his hives. And it just happened. He brought the bees back. Wow, 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 wow. And so, may you tell me do that? May you tell for me? So Jan gradually became part of our Kabisa. 
这个自然界中，嗯，这个生物多样化的发展，然后提供了最原始的这种授粉。You have a kind of intimate and、uh, immediate relationship with this piece. This is amazing, really amazing. 今天。三米七木木头木头木头。明年 is the link. We are extremely complementary, and without Minyan, I could do nothing. What are you saying? What are you saying? What? He said you said it. I tell him, he will know. He will know. What you say? 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 Lasagna is a way to speed up the process of regenerating the soil. You can really see how the lasagna is working. So we have a cardboard layer, small one, and then we you have green, dry, green, dry, and then compost on top. Oh, oh. Just like wood fan, it's like that. Oh. So we 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 need to we need to add water. 树，好、嗯，对，好的，好的，好的。可以了吗？这些大碗，可以了吗？可以。Iguanho is here in my heart. We have rather the same age. I'm just one year older than him. So we we are very close. For me, is the the human embodiment of this place. Hallelujah! Ah, good. This is the Lao Zhuan Didi. Hmm. Fish and Zhuan Didi. Lao Zhuan Didi. I'm not Lao Zhuan Didi. You're not Lao Zhuan Didi. I'm not Lao Zhuan Didi. The memory of the place and the fact that we meet makes a lot of sense to me. But you can't be sure about me. Is it possible to to hold the to get the farm to hold the farm? It's not possible. It's not possible to hold me. I want to be with you again, but it's not possible. Because your heart has no flower. 我觉得花不是这么重要。嗯，谢谢。<笑>我想给你打电话，说、哦、弟弟你在哪里？我会，我会来看你吗？嗯，你说什么？我啊，对。要来走走，我不是想你的。嗯、<笑>可以，我错，我错，我给你打电话。给你接着扛着去了。<笑> Ali up. I don't want to do anything in Lao Tuan Di without them in action with what they have kept and then move together forward. I, I think there is no other way. Yang Tu, ma, is to make the old forest water and the natural forest. Then we go into the forest and we. 
它,它的微生物，然后循环起来，然后整个生态循环起来，然后开始先把土养肥，然后才能种出好的东西。Yeah, this is good. This is good stuff. Yeah. The green one is for the nitrate, and then the dry one is for the carbon. So this gives the the component to the soil which are necessary. This is nature's smell. The compost that you will put on top will feed the soil with bacteria and also with many other types of minerals and many other components. Allez, hop ça, My mission here is to be part of the community. I'm not the foreigner coming, you know, with, on this island, having a good life in this villa, not at all. I want to help. This is the Nifama. 哎呦，但我听不着，是是哪个？你是哪个的？你你在家生产吗？大哥好。My experience with Li Guanhe is very inspiring to me. We love each other. I mean, it's as simple as that. Ma shan lai, can ni kui ma? Kui kui. Kui kui. Wo lai wo lai wo. Just now, the roads are better, and the life conditions are better. But it seems like the people in the village don't have so many. The young people are working outside. I hope more young people will come out. I think this place is more interesting than Kabisa. 更有意思。这，这块地就是我，我跟你说了，我那块地，非常非常好。你要做铺门吗？做，要做。真的吗？真的，真的吗？我们应该谈谈跟邻居们。小张 is like an exception in the local culture. He needs to get more pride and understand that being an exception like this is a gift and not a curse. Me as a senior guy, I have to help youngsters like him to find their power, especially when they have this kind of power, you know. You think that place is good? Oh, very charming. More and more people know Kabisa, so we get a lot of people coming from very different horizons. So we want to uh, set up an international permaculture community in Laochuandi. We have been discussing with the government for quite a long time and we are moving gradually to do that. The basic of everything is very simple. If we do not change, we will go extinct. It's too late to do only protection. If you let nature regenerate itself, it takes 100 years. We cannot wait 100 years for nature to do that. We have to do the same as nature, but quicker.
next up, a full-on documentary. I was after, this went from one of my friends, Erin from Florette. You might recognize her from her show on Magnolia. She's a beautiful storyteller, beautiful filmmaker, and I, I knew about this film, and I knew I wanted it in this series when I s knew it was from her, and I saw the title, Gardening in a War Zone. Okay, this is about a bold young lady in Ukraine pushing forward growing flowers despite being in a war zone. So I don't care if, if you're a homesteader or a, a New York City uh, executive, this film will have a pill for you and should aspire all of us. Let's get right to it. Дідько, хай йому Sometimes I'm trying to get asleep and I begin to think about the war, about the explosions, about this possibility that um, any time my dearest persons can be killed. I say to myself, do not think about that. Think about flowers. smells very very nice scent smell it I started gardening long, long ago. When I was a small child, I adored flowers. The parents say that they just couldn't take me away from the flowers when I saw them. I have <laughs> two gardens because I have a plot at my granny's and I also have a plot at my uh, mother-in-law's. The garden in Kharkiv, it is bigger in size, much bigger in size. My great-grandfather received this plot after World War II and his dream was an orchard. It was the Soviet times. It was really difficult to buy something in stores. The shortages were all over the country. He decided
decided to change the situation, at least for his family, and he made this. Watch it. It was his hobby, but he turned this hobby into his business. He was gathering apples and selling them at the market, and in this way he made his living. My gardening also started as a hobby, just like my great-grandfather. I never thought that it would become something that important for my whole family. My husband, my granny, my mother-in-law, uh, we all depend on the garden now. Well, I arrived to the garden. Let's enter together. The granny is waiting for me already. Breathe. Oh, it's such a happiness to see her. Ah, oh, she's 89 years old, and every day with her is a treasure. Молочка, привет! Я рада тебе бачити. Я тебе рада тебе бачити. А я тебе як рада. Ой. Ти як почуваєшся? Болію я. Сідай, сідай, сідай. The granny took medicines and she's sleeping. And here you can see the garden outside the window. Ah, here it is, so beautiful. Well, I planned to get to the garden early in the morning, but the day started just terribly with those explosions, and as a result, I arrived only by the evening. And, uh, well, I'm starting doing the most important things which can be done today. Ah, look how beautiful it is! This is Clematis glaucophila and it's a very strong plant. Many, many seed heads and I will be gathering seeds with my own hands. And these are very nice and very good quality ripe Clematis seeds. Look how beautiful and how nice they are. Every time when I look at them, I just enjoy this sight. I hope you will enjoy with me. It's incredible how many lives, future lives, I have in my hand right now. Selling seeds is our main income and actually it's for the whole family. My aim is to collect as many seeds this year as it would be possible. Just every seed I see on my plants. Lots of wonderful and rare clematis are growing, species pennies, uh, snowdrops, garden orchids and uh, rare perennials. This is my real passion. All the gardening season, all my efforts are dedicated to seeds. providing the best quality possible, the best conditions possible.
the survival of the family depends on it, but I'm always short of time. When there are air alerts, it is dangerous to stay in the garden. Sometimes we have rather quiet days. But sometimes it's just terrible, like we can have air alert every hour. Okay, alert and air alert and again and again. Especially here in Kharkiv, everyone is afraid. Russia is very close to our city. When the war started, we heard the shots the same very day. The shots, the explosions. extremely scary uh, immediately when you hear it um, unfortunately it's night so nothing can be seen are uh, just those very vicious air lot signals uh, it sounds just terrible Many people left. Many people. We just have empty flats here. Many, many people, I would say. Everyone who could actually left. And, uh, well, lucky they are, I would say. several days we can have pressed frost and uh, this year I'm waiting for the winter with uh, how to say it with much fear because um, 
it will be severe. Uh, the authorities promise that it will be even more severe than uh, last year's winter. So, like, um, I don't want my garden to fade. I don't want my garden to be um, frozen because um, all those flowers, they bring so much joy. Um, I still have roses there and, like, the roses are even higher than me this year. Uh, they were very, very abundant. And they're still flowering, adding much color to our lives. So clematis are also flowering. Now I just look. Uh, this is, I think, the third wave of flowering. So it's beautiful. Uh, and while I can see, I will cut off several flowers to take them home because it's just a door arrangement. Uh, it's very important for me to have some fresh flowers and I do it despite everything, even when it's really hard because um, it helps. It helps to cope with the problems. So. Let me cut off some flowers and make a small arrangement at home. Most news agencies promise a black winter for Ukraine. Everyone understands that the missiles are being put aside for the coldest period of the year. This period is the best for damaging infrastructure in order to leave the country without heat, without electricity, and without means of survival. Так, а бабка вже дома? Ні, ще в лікарні. Ще в лікарні? Ну, так, ще перевіряють, бо їй зробили кардіограму, а потім ще будуть налаштовувати кардіостимулятор, його ж треба вже змінювати, там вже сплинув термін. А змінювати немає коштів, поставити новий, бо він же ж дорогущий. І, ну, не знаю, сподіваємося, що вдасться налаштувати і вдасться все ж таке, щоб поки що, ну, поки немає змоги, щоб вона якось... А тебе що там в порядку? Та тут, 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 більш-менш. Більш-менш. Не хочеться, щоб холодно було, бо опалення немає. Дуже я боюся знову захворіти. А зараз взагалі волюбоління дуже багато людей. Та багато, я також чую, і по новинах кажуть, що знову той ковід. Ой, господі, дуже звісно, що... I understand that as soon as we have the black winter, when the infrastructure is damaged and we do not have electricity and we do not have heating, the prices for fuel, they will just fly up. Пойдемте. О, здравствуйте! Сегодня у нас 
очень жарко. Плюс 33 в тени. К концу недели обещают... I had some plans before the war. I made this YouTube channel about gardening in Ukraine. I wanted to show that we can grow the same plants as other highly developed countries. When Ukraine was part of the Soviet Union, we didn't develop simultaneously with the Western garden culture. Only when Ukraine gained its independence and when the Internet appeared, we were able to see the gardens abroad. It's very interesting to be at the very beginning of this industry. Nurseries and gardens forming in our country. Чувствую, я буду ковыряться так очень долго. Наверное, нам понадобится помощь. We wanted to make a nursery. Sure. Да, очень нужно. Иначе съемки видео затянутся. There was a high demand in the country for rare plants. But then my husband fell ill with COVID. He was on oxygen for almost three months. And then the war started. Ага, кажется, сейчас ливанют опять. Надо убегать. I miss those times before the war. Давай, давай. Скорей, пошли. Надо снять видео про наш снегоочиститель. Снег, жми. Да? А так. Нифига себе! Слушай, а ты можешь так же с нашим автомобилем сделать? Чтоб... Оп! I was actually paralyzed in the first uh, months of the war because I had a very difficult situation. The husband who didn't walk and use oxygen concentrator, he had around 90% of lung injury and some heart damage. Also a very old granny who was 88 years old and with serious heart disease. Also, my mother-in-law, she is not too young. They were unable to work. I understood that I do not have means to continue the treatment of husband, of granny. I do not have means actually to buy food. I do not have means to leave the war zone with all my family. I cried half a day because I understand that um, I do not have that funds. And well, that moment I started realizing that I have to do something like maybe else in my life because I'm just unable to help the people I really love, the people, my my relatives. So, And when the war started, I keep thinking this way so that I'm doing not enough in my life.
selling seeds. It was like my last resort, my last attempt with no um, no hope that it will work out. Foreign followers, they started ordering seeds. I understood that it may be a very good way to support my family. The granny is clothed warmly in her warm coat at home because we have no heating and in order to heat with some electric devices uh, it's just extremely expensive so we need to withstand this somehow more roses to enjoy and even some clematis You can see some beauty even in the middle of October, though it's so cold. This place was so beautiful and so charming in spring and in summer, but soon it all will be covered with snow and it will be really, really cold here. send seeds to the United States, uh, Canada, to the United Kingdom, France, Germany, Switzerland, uh, Poland, Lithuania, and also I had a parcel to one Japanese gardener. He wanted snowdrops a lot, as I have quite many, and so Japan as well. So today's harvest here it is, and it is a very good result. I gathered lots of seeds, I worked for half of the day, and now I need to process them, so I have lots of work at home too. It's a big, big joy that I bring some joy to the gardens of other people, and they helped my family to survive. Just look, Granny decided to support me from the window. Here she is, my dear Granny. Ой, у Лузі червона калина похилилася. Ой, чому ж наша рідна Україна зажурилася? Бути українцем – це означає величезна жага до життя, це величезна сміливість, це сміливість відстоювати свої права, так, своє право на існування. snow of the season so early previously the first snow of the season was a fairy tale this year I rather feel sad I'm so much scared of the black winter well this year I do not enjoy the snow, but yes, it's beautiful. 
just look at the garden. We are afraid that international support started to shrink. It's understandable because the war lasts uh, too long, more than a year and a half. We can just hope and we hope for the best. We try to hope for the best. while you are alive and while you have an opportunity to make something productive, beautiful and good. There is always a hope. So we try to hope for the better and we try to hope that the war will end, but we can't say when. Yes, of course, it's difficult, but actually no one promised that the life would be just a pleasure, that it would be just simple. I'm, I was born in a very, very simple and poor Ukrainian family, so no way. <laughs> You can't imagine how cold I am and it's high time to leave the garden because the curfew starts soon and the curfew is the time specifically for the military man and no civilian can be in the street at the moment because it's very very dangerous and prohibited by law so I'm leaving the garden and going home. Wow, right? So good, I'm so pleased with all these films that have come into there. Thank you, Aaron, and the Florette team for contributing that. That was such a beautiful film. Now, everybody, you might not want to eat popcorn during this one, so put your snacks away, and let's go to Guatemala, and let's see what happens when there's a, I believe it's a drought. Remember, I just skimmed these because I want to watch them with you. I believe it's a drought, and this woman goes through extreme measures to feed her family, and that includes worms. Get ready to expand your mind. Hurricane Ada made landfall Tuesday afternoon as a Category 4 hurricane, packing winds of 140 miles per hour. Dry conditions are also plaguing Guatemala. A drought has triggered widespread food shortages. The United Nations World Food Program says malnutrition is a concern. These arid hillsides were once covered with thick stalks of corn. 
But these days, Trencalino Vasquez is lucky to salvage a few underdeveloped cobs. From high above, this looks like a lush landscape. But when you peel back the layers, a very different story. These fields are ravaged, crops inedible. Millions of Guatemalans are on... Con ellos empecé desde cuando mi niña tenía tres años, que es la más pequeña, por una desnutrición crónica que ella tenía. Ella no comía ningún tipo de carnes y tenía bajo peso. Viene el programa de, de gusanos en ese entonces y yo decido eh, optar por aceptar la granja, que fue como en el 2007, si mal no estoy. Desde ese entonces yo he mantenido la granja porque siento que es una fuente de proteína sin costo alguno. Al principio eh, no les agradaba, no les agradó la idea de consumir gusanos. Eh, la primera vez como lo probaron fue en una galleta hecho por eh, prácticamente la Asociación de los Gusanos. Cuando lo probaron, sí les gustó la galleta, pero saber que íbamos a tener que tener una granja eh, no, fue un poquito difícil, pero después lo aceptaron sin ningún inconveniente. Ah, incluso hasta ellas lo limpian, lo mantienen, o sea, le quitan la piel muerta, le ponen comida, que lo hacemos usualmente cada dos días. Entonces ahora ya es normal comer gusanos, de hecho siempre procuro ponerlo en cualquier comida o consumirlo solo con limón y sal. Que nosotras como mujeres, que a veces eh, tenemos escasez de recursos para alimentar a nuestras hijas, a ellas no les falte lo esencial para crecer. Por ejemplo, aparte de la, de la granja de gusanos que yo tengo para mi familia, también mantengo pollos para que produzcan huevo para mi misma familia. Entonces es, un, es una ayuda económica para mí, para ahorrar lo económico y no estar comprando lo de granja. A otras mujeres que, que son de escasos recursos, yo les digo de que eh, el obtener una granja de gusanos, aparte de que es una fuente de proteína para nuestros hijos, también es un, una fuente de ingresos que nosotros no tenemos que sacar económicamente de nuestra bolsa para obtener la alimentación de nuestros hijos. Y que mantener una granja de gusanos no es asqueroso, sino al contrario, es rico en proteína. Solamente. Por lo mismo hay mucha desnutrición crónica en nuestro, en nuestro país, por lo mismo porque no, no recibimos un apoyo del gobierno, sino prácticamente tenemos que ponernos a, a trabajar para alimentar a nuestras niñas. No es más como se ve, sino lo que aporta a nuestro cuerpo. Ellos consumen la carne de cerdo, que no es tan higiénico para criarlos. ¿Por qué no comer gusanos? Si está más higiénico todavía. Yo para el futuro espero eh, tener más producción de, de gusanos. Para algún día poder demostrarles a las mujeres que no tienen recursos para darles proteínas a sus hijos y que hay muchos niños por eso tienen desnutrición, 
para que ellos vean que es una, una, es una fuente de alimentación sin ningún costo. Simplemente con un poco de formación o educarnos para que ellos aprendan a comer gusanos sin gastar económicamente. From worms to pigs. I don't think it's going to be as gross unless you think pig births are gross. Maybe you're going to keep the popcorn to the side. This is a movie from Zach at the Pastured Homestead YouTube channel. He so graciously submitted this film. Why we liked it is it's a movie from the animal's perspective. In this case, the pig's perspective. And the idea of something being born and harvested on the farm. There's something really beautiful in that, and this is really good storytelling from Zach. I believe that having a connection to your food is extremely important. To watch an animal's birth, be there for every growth spurt, every feeding, and eventually be the one to appreciate and understand the sacrifice is really a beautiful thing. When Ashlyn and I moved across the country, we had one goal in mind, to grow our own food. We like to take the let's throw ourselves at it and learn as we go approach, so that's exactly what we did. We wanted to raise our own meat source, but we didn't like the idea of having to buy feeders every single time we wanted to raise a hog. So we decided to get some Idaho pasture pigs that we could breed, and from those litters we would keep one or two for our pork production. The rest would be sold, which essentially paid for our pork. I'm not sure I fully understood at this time that this piglet would be born on our farm, would be grown on our farm, and would be butchered on this farm. At no point in this pig's life did it deal with the stress of being ripped away from his mother too early, or placed on a trailer and shipped a thousand miles, or packed into a cage without direct sunlight and fresh air. The only thing this pig knew was our farm, and that makes me happy. The life of a feeder pig is anywhere between six and 10 months, and it's amazing how quickly that time goes by. One moment he's a cute little piglet and the next he's a big 200 pound beast ready to eat everything in sight. We tend to have a lot of piglets on our farm. Usually in spring and early fall, we've got at least a dozen or two running around. It makes for some really fun times filled with pets, pictures, and new beginnings. As the pigs get older, they become curious, sniffing your hands and taking a nibble every once in a while. They start to steal mom's grain, but still like to wash it down with some milk. It's amazing how quickly they pick up on how to be a pig. If they watch mom do it, they end up doing it too. Eventually, the piglets get so big and obnoxious that mom can't take it anymore. She's tired of her nipples getting tugged on and wants all the grain to herself. At this point, we separate the piglets and we take them off mom. Mom gets some time to herself and the piglets get to be as rambunctious as they'd like. Piglets like to play and fight just like we did when we were kids. Well, we've only got six piglets left in here. All the rest have gone to their forever homes and we'll be keeping two of them. This little lady right here, that's Marigold. And then I think we're gonna be keeping that guy right in the back. For some reason, they just absolutely love playing with the little scooper. Maybe I need to get a little ball to throw in here so they can roll it around. You wanna play fetch? Go get it. That didn't work. Here, Marigold. Here. This light one is Marigold. We're keeping her for breeding stock. And then that little guy right there, uh, Ashlyn named him Bacon because, well, he's gonna be bacon. Once the piglets have been separated, it's time for mom and dad to meet again. This time on a nice fresh piece of forest full of all the green they can eat. With all our animals, we move them around to different areas of our farm. With pigs, we tend to put them in areas we need cleared out. Moving pigs like this is a lot of work. Setting up posts, running wire, and making sure they are secure takes up a lot of time, but it is always worth it. It doesn't take long until the sow's back in heat again and bred for a spring litter. 
Pigs have a gestation period of about 120 days. That's some chickweed. That's some something. <laughs> the piglets, which at this point there are two, get their own little slice of soil. We run all of our pigs on a single strand electric wire, so it's imperative that we train them to it at a young age. We like to keep them close to where they were born while we take them through this process. Young piglets are so funny. They're really sporadic and they jump around like crazy and you touch them and they go a little wild and they've got themselves a pretty good mud pit here, but they're growing out pretty nice. I'm excited to raise bacon up and butcher him and put him in the freezer. I'm excited to smoke some meat, smoke some ham, smoke some bacon, make some Italian sausage. Really looking forward to that. Man, these guys always spill their food. What a bunch of pigs. We use our Idaho pasture pigs for a lot of reasons. These guys are cleaning up our forests. Bert and Penelope here have a different job to turn this sawdust, hay, and cow pies into compost. In the spring, summer, or early fall, their primary diet is this or this with a little bit of this on the side. I love running our pigs in the forest and on pasture, but in the fall and the winter time when all this greenery goes away, to avoid a high feed bill, we're growing them food in the ground. We decided to plant some food plots for our pigs in an area where we farrow the moms. That way they're not penned up the whole time and we can give the piglets some space to root, forage, and be a young pig. We planted ryegrass in some areas and in others we decided to plant a mixture of turnips and rye. Pigs love ryegrass. The first time I saw a pig grazing like a cow, I thought I was going crazy. Turnips are coming in really nice. Ryegrass is coming in really nice. They're not beating each other out. They're coming up at the same time. It's perfect. Pigs love their grain. They love their food scraps, but I wanted to see if I could grow them food right there on farm. The turnips grew in very well, but the pigs did not like to eat them. It didn't matter if it was ripe, mashed, or cooked. These guys were not interested in it. Life is full of learning lessons. As time went on, the piglets got bigger and bigger and ate more and more feed, but they were just as spunky as when they were babies. Eventually, they understood the power of the electric wire and graduated from their training pen to a nice fresh piece of ground. But there was no free lunch. They had a job and that was to clear this piece of forest that was filled with brambles and downed trees which kept me from cleaning it up with the tractor. It doesn't take long for these guys to turn a thick forest into a cleared piece of land. Come fall, we had three litters on the ground totaling 19 piglets, one of which is next year's pork. We fed them all of our leftover pumpkins which is also a natural dewormer. These piglets were getting close to weaning age and we had a plan. Our back pasture needed some major work. It was overgrazed and left to grow for many years. It seemed like the only thing growing back there was goldenrod. So instead of keeping our pigs in a winter pasture, we decided to take on the muddy job of rotationally grazing three groups of pigs all winter long, allowing them to till it up and expose the ground so we could come behind them and seed it for spring. To do this, we needed to build some structures, set up some fencing and provide water. This was a big job, and it still is. We are still currently moving these pigs through these poor pastures as I'm making this video. Moving the pigs to the back of the property was a challenge in and of itself. Well, that was a complete disaster. It went just about as bad as we could have expected. We still had a few feeder piglets that hadn't sold as well as our feeder and two others that we were raising for someone else. Well, we got the piglets in. This is bacon. We all know what he's for. Seems to be pretty nice with the piglets. They'll find their place. Having animals on pasture just feels right. That's probably because it is. These pigs were born for this. This is where they thrive. No one can ever convince me that a concrete floor is going to be more beneficial for them than a nice piece of dirt for them to dig in. At some point, we even grew some grains for the pigs. They grew really well, but honestly, it was way too much work for it to be very sustainable. As time went on, we kept moving the pigs. Our goal was to till up six acres by the end of the winter. I would have to stay very consistent with their moves, usually every seven to 10 days, but sometimes the rain and mud kept us from moving. Those little piglets you saw being born at the beginning of the video weren't so little now. Bacon was coming up on his butcher date and Marigold was getting old enough to breed. It has been a long 10 months, but the time has come to take bacon to freezer camp. For some of you, this may just look like a guy butchering a pig, but for me, it's much more than that. It's 10 months of twice a day feeding, it's countless moves, it's the successes and failures we faced, and it's the consistency it took to get it done. You're probably wondering what it's like to watch an animal give birth, provide and care for it, watch it grow up, and then use that animal to feed your family. 
It's powerful. I hate looking at the shelves of meat at the grocery store because all I can think about is the lack of life that animal must have had. Sure it lived, but did it really? Our pigs have the opportunity to do what a pig does best, root up the ground, wallow in the mud, and eat everything in sight. The majority of the pork you see at the store spent its days on concrete floors and four walls because the farmer didn't want to deal with the mud. The beautiful part about being a consumer is the power you have. The choices you make, the places you go, and the things you buy have more say in what happens in this world than you'd think. If I could dream big for just a moment and block out any piece of reality, I hope someday all families grow their own food or know their local farmer and families can sit down around the table feasting on the most nutrient-rich food, knowing exactly what life this animal lived and appreciating the sacrifice it made. Our food is everything. Without it, we would die. So we should all feel a responsibility to provide our bodies with the highest quality food by giving our food the best possible life. Thank you so much for watching. We will see you in the next one. Look at that. This is working out great. Let's now go back overseas. Let's talk about inspiring farmers changing and adapting to some weather changes. In this film, appropriately titled Late Frost, they're dealing with frost, and I find it so interesting, the extremes and the creativity they're going through to save their crops. Ouais, ouais. Mmh. ça brûle aussi. Ah ouais, C'est du combustible. Okay. Écoute, il va faire entre moins 1 et moins 2. Oui. Ça devrait venir vers 4 heures. Donc euh, on commence à chauffer à 4h, 4h30. Pour qu'on ait le temps de chauffer au moment où il fera le plus froid. Les petites boules avec les petites queues, tout ça, ce sont des fruits. Et s'il n'y avait pas eu la lutte anti-gel avec 9 nuits de gel sur ces abricotiers, il n'y aurait plus rien du tout. C'est des cultures pérennes hein, et c'est du vivant. On essaye de les aider, mais après on est quand même à un moment donné confronté aux, aux limites du climat. Qu'est-ce que tu regardes 
Après, je regarde euh, comment ça évolue vite. Mmh. Moi, je suis confiant, on va y arriver. Oui, on va y arriver, oui, oui mais c'est quand même toujours le stress, comme d'hab. Ouais, on sera autour de zéro à 4 heures du matin. À 8 heures, on sera autour de moins 2, moins 3. Bon. Donc. Il faut allumer à 5 heures. Il faut allumer à 5 heures. Bah écoute, hein, on va aller se coucher plus parce que sinon on va pas y arriver. Tu vois bien que ça, c'est blanc là. Salut Vous avez tous quelque chose là C'est bon Ah oui. Ah, on a tout ça. Les flammes commencent à venir derrière là, c'est bon signe. Ça marche chez vous ah, Écoute, c'est en train de partir partout chez nous. Hein. Tiens, plus 4, plus 4, et, et l'autre il te dit quoi Celui-là il donne seulement plus, plus 1, 6. Voilà, mon intérieur est bien jaune, vert comme ça, que je le feuillet est intact. Là au star d'où ça serait seulement marron. Tu viens deux heures après, c'est moi. Et là, on verra vraiment le fruit d'ici, allez, 8-10 jours. Tout dépend de, du temps aussi. And lastly, but not leastly, a really fun video by the man behind the camera, Austin, the man behind the Justin Rhodes vlogs and the edits. 
I'd like to think of this one as a spoof, as a what it takes to make a vlog. I uh, chose this one because, well, it's fun, so everybody will leave with a laugh. And then two, it gives you an idea of what goes in to some of these movies that these people are making and the movies that I make. And I think it's just a fun, insightful, gives us perspective. It's a fun behind the scenes take on making movies. Hi, I'm Justin Rhodes, video editor, but some people call me Austin. March 2020, the world shuts down. My wife and I buy some chickens and some more. We watch videos on how to raise chickens. Subscribe to the Justin Rhodes Show. Watch the Great American Farm Tour. Justin sends an email out looking for a videographer. Send them a work. They say maybe next time. Subscribe to One S Plus. Three years later, Justin posts a contest. I submit for the contest. Justin shoots me an email, tells me I won. A year and some months later, Justin texts me and says, our best video yet. Let's just see what made this the best vlog yet. Really big day today in my simple and sinister training. One arm swings at 62 pounds. All right, before we get too deep, if Justin sends me a folder with less than 100 files, it's gonna be a good day. For some reason, it's just less overwhelming. This project here was actually 100, about 120 files. Fun fact, as of right now, because this is always changing, we try to keep the vlog anything under 12 minutes. Immediately starts off with a shirtless man, catchy beat. Captivating. I feel like I'm in the best shape of my life now. Yeah, looks decent. Hey, how long have we been doing this training? We started in 21, yes. May of 21. So two and a half years? Yeah, two and a half years. Okay, so now we've got a story, something we can dive into and something, a theme for the vlog. Gideon! Of course, we've got our daily, where's Gideon? Here we got some chainsaw issues. What's going on? We got leaves. Justin just started doing these moves kind of recently. Caught me a little bit off guard, but kind of catching on. You good? That leaf pile was not as soft as it looked. I just turned 45 a couple months ago. You know, that's the same age as my dad. Justin could be my dad. This year is the year of my healing. Here we've got a nice cutaway with a drone like it. We found out yesterday, I do not have lupus. We had gotten a positive blood test and we got a second blood test just to confirm. All right, so here we got a new character in the vlog. I don't know about y'all, but I really like when they bring in new characters into the vlog. I know back when I first started watching, whenever a new character would come in, it was just something new and interesting. I like it. Flat filed some of those teeth. I think I got it. Good tip that Justin always gives me. We never want to start a story or an issue without ending it within that vlog or solving it within that vlog. Um, so here, solve the chainsaw issue. Good job. You know, Jonah actually gave the idea for this chainsaw bit. Well, but have him take out all the transitions of you moving from this. Okay, so good idea. Going really fast. Although I also had the same thought, but Jonah is the one who said it. Anyways, thanks Jonah. Let's go see your job, y'all. Nice transition with the audio and drone shots. This is so steep. Slide steep. Yeah, this is steep. <laughs> <coughs> All right, so if you notice, the camera's set up at a distance and he doesn't have a cameraman. So he goes and sets up this camera, walks, does his shot, goes back, get his camera, and then continues on with the story. I mean, that's dedication. If I don't have lupus, what's wrong with me? So he continues on with his health journey, the theme of the vlog. We're already four minutes in, but I mean, we break up the story so well throughout um, that he just kind of continues to live his life throughout while also telling the story. It just flows so well. Well done. Sometimes I find these little bits where the kids just make silly faces or whatever. Funny. I'm about to pull you like a rickshaw. You know, sometimes Justin just says something and then this pops in my head. Smooth it out up there. Too much jostling. I'm fasting. I'm eating clean. So Justin gives me instruction to go find these B-roll shots. So let's do B-rolls of all those things that I just said. That took me a while because I had to rewatch some old vlogs. Justin says it's always bring your kid to work day. Austin, hopefully I remember. And I'll ask Rebecca what my supplements are. What supplements do I take? That you do take currently? Yeah. Okay, so... So my original idea here was to fill up the screen with the names of all these supplements and uh, started to type it out. I had no idea how to spell them, so 
This is what I did instead. <laughs> Justin will give me instructions to the camera. He'll just talk to the camera and tell me uh, any ideas that he has. Sometimes I listen, sometimes I don't. Okay, Austin, morning. I have a sunrise coming up. In this case, I just thought I had a better idea. All right, so this was like a 30 minute call. Looked like a 10 second call. Uh, didn't think he'd want to listen to the whole thing. You know, Justin actually has about 24 hours in a day, just like the rest of us. Sometimes I see these comments about like, you know, where's so-and-so or why isn't so-and-so doing this, blah, blah, blah. This 10 minute bit of his life, not his entire day. Vitamin D deficient. Again, we're breaking up the talking shots, throwing some nice B-roll. He won't be off, he's stubborn, he wants to be with Peaches. All right here, we're rounding it out with the whole family, got some interaction with Lily. One boy, one brain, two boys, half a brain. I like that noise destruction right there. As an editor, I was ready to just cut that clip, but whatever. I am working on stress. And then she out? pointed out, leaky gut. We can get supplements for that. Justin has a rule, don't hold the shot for longer than 10 seconds. Cause you know, it just kind of gets boring. So sometimes I have to get creative. I might zoom in, zoom out. Add some B-roll, throw in a funny clip. Here I come. You know, some people don't like these quick paced cuts. Here's the thing, Justin's always changing, and so is YouTube. We gotta keep up with the times. For the very first vlog we did together, to now, completely changed. Going from shorter vlogs to longer vlogs. When I first started working with Justin, he told me that the cinematic sequences, people, people don't really like it. It feels like a commercial, but it turns out we both enjoy it, so. They're in the vlog. <laughs> Overall, how do you feel about that call? I feel great. I feel good. We're gonna start with dealing. We got six weeks. All right, we've ended the vlog with a happy ending. We've got a solution. We click off of this video and we feel satisfied. Happy day. We are on our way to healing. So Justin does these weird little hand movements. Uh, I just thought I'd play along. My dad said something the other day about Justin and his family. They've made a living off of just living their life. And that's what's beautiful about the Justin Road Show. It's life. Hey Justin, ready to review the next edit? Thank you so much for joining the first annual Abundance Plus Film Festival. Hey, let's make the next film festival, the second one, even bigger and better. We'll leave info down in the description for those who want to contribute a film for next year. We'll need your film by January 29th of 2025. So think about what you want to film this 2024. Also, these videos are going to be available for replay in case you didn't catch everything. In case you want to share it, please do share it. They'll be up until Monday midnight. But then after that, if you want to watch them, you got to get Abundance Plus. You won't regret it. All 16 of these titles will be in Abundance Plus amongst the other inspirational documentaries and shows and educational material and our private exclusive community where we come together. I'm active in it every day. We show off, we help each other, and we get things done. So do check that out at AbundancePlus.com. Link down in the description. Thank you. Happy day.